My guest today is Heather Wild. Heather, how are you? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, David? I'm doing really well. Are you enjoying DevSum? I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. What do you want to talk about today? Um, I am really passionate about anticipatory design. Do you know what that is? No. Well, that's cool. Then we can I, talk me, about that. I know. What, well, I know what design is, and I know what anticipatory is because I'm experiencing it right now. <laughs> exactly. So tell me, tell me, tell me already. <laughs> so uh, anticipatory design is a uh, relatively new field uh, that it marries user interfaces with machine learning. Hmm. So um, when you think about that, it's you take a really beautiful user experience, a user interface, the two of those things, not just one. Um, and uh, oh, well, that's interesting. So uh, define, some people use them as synonyms, but they're not. User experience and user interface, is, what's the difference? So uh, a user interface is something that a user uses to um, interface with a product. Okay. And a user experience is the whole experience around creating that interface. Hmm, so. Okay. Um, so a user experience could be is multi-sensory. It doesn't need to be uh, just like a flat uh, screen on something. It can be the sounds that you're using. It can be the, mm. the smells of a room. Like hmm. think about walking into a McDonald's, for example. Oh, so we're not limiting just to software here. We're no, no. Uh, it can be like you, you've got the colors of the tables that look the same in a McDonald's, for example. You've got mm. the, the, the way that they... Uh, they they cast all of the tables in a certain color. So the consistency of a McDonald's is a is a big part of what they do. Yeah, and the smell when it walks in, mm -hmm. like so that makes you feel it's the like French fries. Exactly, that overwhelm you. Exactly. In fact, I think they they pump that out into the street as you're walking. They around. do, yeah. <laughs> so you, like, and you can you can all, f I mean, I'm sure all of us developers know what a McDonald's feels and smells and sounds and all of that, like, and that's a user experience. Okay. Whereas the user interface would be uh, the the French fry tasting itself, mm. like you're okay. eating the French fry. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's a good analogy or good uh, example, I should say. Yeah. All right, so I, I interrupted you. Please continue. Oh yeah. So the uh, so when when you um, have obviously machine learning, like when you understand the data behind. Uh, uh, we have enough data about how many people are buying french fries every day, uh, then you can uh, know how many things that you have to make per hour of, uh, and then say uh, McDonald's could then make that french fry for you uh, before you walk into the store, and then okay. you can they can hand it to you knowing that you're going to order it before you even walk in. Based on machine learning? Yes. They say somebody that looks like Heather ordered french fries yes three times last week yes this, this heather looking person is probably gonna order french fries and the way they do that is by marrying it to an app okay. so like if you and it doesn't have to be like the mcdonald's app it could mm. be google maps or something like that they, mm. they're integrating with it knowing that you are walking past a mcdonald's you've walked into a mcdonald's and you've possibly p paid for it with google pay or something like mm. that Wow. A and now they know that at this time of day you're walking in and doing that. So that's anticipatory design. That's uh -huh. an example of that. Well, they certainly could do it uh, based on your individual preferences. Mm -hmm. If the app's on your phone and you always order McDonald's and a, and a large Coke or a fries and a large Coke, yeah, then that's th they know your habits. Uh, but machine learning implies that there's there's generalizations to be to be made from lots and lots of data from. Lots of people. And the, and there is that available. So, for example, Target is doing stuff like this by um, ordering Pop-Tarts, for example, ahead of hurricanes to know that people are, uh, like, there's hurricanes happening, uh, or actually tornadoes happening in the U.S. right now, and they know uh -huh. uh, to order uh, certain types of things ahead of those tornadoes so because uh -huh. people are going to buy them for their, their preparedness kits. So... Hmm. Uh, and that's a general type of thing. Oh, because you don't need to turn your microwave on yes. to eat a Pop-Tart. Yes. <laughs> so that's that's where... And if it's the brown sugar cinnamon one, they're it, delicious. Yes. Well, <laughs> strawberry is actually the number one flavor that let's, they order. Let's agree to disagree. Brown <laughs> sugar cinnamon is the way to go. I'm, I'm a <laughs> s'mores person myself. But the uh, but so that's where... Uh, so that's actually being done with AI and logistics. But then when you take it to the anticipatory uh, uh, design level, it actually becomes uh, a whole t uh, type of system where you get uh, what Starbucks is doing, for example. They have the Starbucks app okay. where um, 
you marry it to the Starbucks store and say, say I have uh, a specific type of drink that I order. Right. And uh, I always order that, that drink. Well, now, whenever I pass a Starbucks, that drink is now prepared for me, whether I order it or not. Whoa, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and then it'll send me a notification in the app. Your drink is ready. Your drink is ready. <laughs> Better get in here. And then there's no human in the store that's doing that. Yeah. They, and the drink actually isn't prepared for me. It's just suggesting to me that I do it. And then it will send a notice to the store if it sees that I am now going towards the store. <laughs> um, because it's giving the suggestion that, oh, well, you, this person at this time of day usually orders that. So, so thinking of this kind of thing, yeah. you can apply that to basically any product if you have enough data on not just the individual level, but the general. Hmm, okay. Um, you, you said uh, user interface and user experience, and I'd be, I thought of a computer screen mm -hmm. and the buttons on there and the data on there and so mm -hmm. on. Is that, uh, is that something that this applies to as well? Yeah, so you can do this just, uh, I mean, well, with anticipatory design, it generally has to do with hardware and software working together. Okay. So, um, so a, a mobile application does that really well. Yeah. It has a software involved and it takes advantage of like the GPS on the phone, for example, that, that hardware. Yeah. And that would be the interface uh, that you get. Um, but then like any kind of uh, enabled home, uh, like Alexa products are really great for, okay. for helping with this. And they also collect so much data that it helps to create a profile of a person. Hmm. Uh, and and be able to to get to that anticipatory level. Hmm. Interesting. Give me one more example. Uh, so Amazon right now has a store. Uh, they're, they've opened up a couple of them that are called their Amazon Go stores. Okay. And uh, right now it's a grocery store that that if you have the Amazon app installed, uh, you don't even need a separate app. It's just the Amazon app that you can walk into and. Uh, there's no people in the store at all. No you, people working in the store. Yeah, just customers. Just customers, <laughs> and uh, you just walk through the store, and it uh, it it scans your app that's in your pocket through mm -hmm. Bluetooth on the way in, or even Wi-Fi, and um, it, with no interaction from you, you don't have to scan anything. You're just pulling things off the shelf, and then as you walk out of the store, it, it scans your purchase again no interaction so you can just you. take things off the shelf put them in your pocket and walk out yes and now that's legal yes I'm glad to hear that that's <laughs> yeah and and the reason that this is an example of anticipatory design is it it is understanding that people want to go into a grocery store mm -hmm. fast they yeah. they don't want to check out they they there's certain products that people buy often mm -hmm. in a convenience store in a grocery store and they put them on this the shelves at the certain levels that people are used to seeing them okay so that one the the interaction in the store is quick okay two uh you, there's no hassle at all to go in and out mm -hmm. and three uh, there's no way to really trick the system. So the cameras all over the store are able to measure what's being purchased, what's not. And mm -hmm. and it's just as long as you have that, that app installed, um, then there's no there's no problem with uh, the purchases. Okay. I haven't been in one of those stores. I've been in a bookstore that mm -hmm. Amazon has in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a checkout. I can't remember now. You can either check out through your app or I don't think it had that... Yeah, they're, well, you they're just walk out with a thing. Uh, it doesn't have the that yet, but they okay. are going to be putting that into my, the others. My, my son bought a book there. I wasn't that was then. I didn't buy one, but he did. But uh, it was uh, it was still nice. It was a good experience. Um, and I, I totally agree. The 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 worst part of grocery shopping is the checkout line. The rest of it is kind of pleasant. You walk. You have a nice little walk through the store. <laughs> there's some soft music playing. You're stopping at the ice cream aisle and thinking. <laughs> What How much I will I need? Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> anticipating that that meal you're gonna have, and then you get the checkout line. That, <laughs> just, that just sucks. And eliminating that is awesome. And even the places that try to give you like the self scan and stuff like that. Yeah, that it, sucks less, but you know. If, well, no, actually, because like if if you get into the self checkout and and you make the wrong decision, you're like, oh wait, I thought I didn't have as much as I do, and now I have to scan here for an hour. Like, it's oh yeah, <laughs> there's a plan. I guess I'm used to it now. I, per, it's not for everybody. Yeah, I, I prefer the checkout, the self checkout. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, um, I, 
people are intrigued. They want to say, I'm, I'm going to build this into my user experience. Let's, where's, where do they learn about it? So the first thing that you do is you have to decide if your product is right for this. So oh, Okay, what are the criteria? Um, well, is, is, it something, is the thing that you're working on something that is a product or a service? Okay. And it, uh, what I mean by that is, is, is your service, I mean, is your thing something that has an online component that's collecting data? from people. Okay. Um, or could it be? Yes. Or could it be? Uh, and do you have a product that can be sitting, collecting data from people locally that like the, like the mobile app that I was talking about from Starbucks, or can you be integrated into people's phones in some way or their nest or something like, can you be integrated with an actual physical product, uh, to collect data to your service? Okay. Um, like Alexa, for example. Correct. Integrating with that would be a big win in this case. Exactly. And if if you can, then you can move on. Okay. <laughs> then do you have a really great designer? <laughs> like, okay. Like you. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not a designer. No. Like I, I, I am not a visual person at all. The um, the but if you have somebody that can, I I, I do experiences, not interfaces. Uh, if if you have somebody that can can create a beautiful interface and and in this case like for example the Amazon store like walking into it the whole thing is beautiful like the like the the shelves have been come up with uh, like they're they're beautiful wood um, like just like in the McDonald's like the, the plastic tables that they, they've been crafted well so that you know what to look for so somebody that can can visualize all that so that you have that consistent beautiful look to okay. It. All right. Um, then uh, I would say Starbucks falls in that category. It, they uh, people feel comfortable hanging out in a Starbucks all afternoon. Exactly. It just has that comfortable feel to it. And you just think about like an Apple box, like any of the Apple products opening those boxes. That oh, kind yeah, of thing. Oh yeah, the famous unboxing experience that it, Apple has. Yeah. Exactly. All of that goes to the the interface and experience combined. Okay. Um, th these these are things that you need to be able to think about. Um, and then if, if you can check that off the list, then, then you can move on to the next step. Then you have to collect a massive amount of data. That's um, a challenge. Yeah. Or buy access to it. Okay. Like if you, if you can, the, a good place to start, if you don't have any of your own, is uh, the government has, the U.S. government, has uh, lists that you can, can use like census data and things like that. Hmm. Um, and there's there's a lot of large data sets that you can get access to for a small amount of money um, uh, for service subscriptions hmm. that are anonymized uh, right. that can get you started. Okay. So using that, you could, for example, decide uh, based on neighborhoods, based on income levels, based on, um, I don't know, the attributes of the person that's using your app. Yeah. You could customize that whole experience from the uses of the app to the in-store experience. Correct. Because you would know who they are and you would know some, th you, could, you could generalize some things about them. Exactly. Based so on some machine learning that's been done based from these large data sets. Exactly. Got it, okay. So you can- I think that was, I was confused earlier because you were talking about individuals using apps and you're talking about machine learning. Yeah. And machine learning is all about big data sets. Mm -hmm. Individual apps are all about me and the computer. Mm -hmm. And there was there's sort of a disconnect there. And I think I, I yeah. think what you just said now- Makes sense. It, it finally made sense for me. Yeah. yeah, so now, like for a company like Target um, or uh, Walmart or Starbucks or McDonald's or whoever, those companies, they have the large data sets, so they yeah. can do machine learning of their own individual users. But you and I, who maybe don't ha own a multi-billion dollar company, we could, we could purchase that data. It, we can purchase generalized data right. and then create personas right. um, that uh, are like our, our smaller users. So we can get started um, for a very small startup fee, but mm. the, the place that I would spend the money uh, for any of this kind of thing is on the design. And that's mm. that's why it's anticipatory design and not machine learning. Right. And you have you write about this stuff a lot, don't you? I do. Where can people read your writings? So I have a column in Ink Magazine. Mm. Um, and uh, so it, and you can find me at Heatheriel on, Inc on Twitter. Heather, thanks so much. Thank you. 
my advice to anyone wanting to get into technology is that you make a lot of friends who are doing the same thing as you. <laughs>